Hey, what is up guys? My name is Oleg. This is Mr. Bond. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to do a head-to-head -head comparison between L'Oreal and Invicta Pro Diver. Both of these watches are Rolex or Mariner homages, and both of them are in a similar price category at about 60 US dollars. So which one should you buy? Well, let's get started. Here are the two watches we're going to compare. On the right, we have L'Oreal. On the left, we have Invicta and I also comprised 10 different categories. So first category is finishes and case specifications. Second one is value for money, bezel, in terms of bezel uh, action, loom, movement, bracelet, purpose, for which purpose the watch was built, packaging of the watch, resale value, and coolness factor with the cool guy emoji. So let's get started with the first category and that's finishes and case specifications. So Invicta gets a seven and L'Oreal gets an eight. So in terms of the finishes, I think both watches are very similar. Both of them have stainless steel cases, but both of them have screw down crowns. These kind of crown guards, of course, both designs are based on Rolex Submariner. However, why L'Oreal gets an eight and Invicta gets a seven? Because L'Oreal has sapphire crystal. So that's gotta be worth at least a point over Invicta's mineral crystal. Okay, specifications point to L'Oreal. Second category, value for money. And here we have both watches scoring a nine. Why do both watches score a nine? Well, we'll talk more about the movement and all the other aspects of the watch in a minute here or so. But basically, L'Oreal offers 200 meters of water resistance. It has sapphire crystal. It is an automatic watch with the display case back. So a lot for your 63. Uh, dollars. Invicta here, again, great value for money. We have the Seiko NH35 movement, also features 200 meters of water resistance, kind of a great everyday watch, great beater watch for $63 or $60 round around there. It's very tough to find a watch that offers better value for money than these two watches, especially an automatic watch in this price category. Third category, Basel. Here, Invicta gets an eight and L'Oreal gets a six. So why does Invicta get higher a uh, mark? Well, the bezel action on Invicta is not perfect. Uh, it's a bit hard to grip because uh, my Invicta Pro Diver has the scalloped bezel as opposed to a coin hedge bezel. So scalloped bezels are a little bit tougher to grip, but the overall movement of the bezel is fairly solid. It doesn't have too much back play and that's why it gets an eight as opposed to uh, L'Oreal here that gets a six because the bezel on this watch is very poor. You can see there's quite a bit of back play. It's, uh, it's very tinny, it doesn't sound very confident. And uh, throughout wearing this watch, I would constantly bump bezel on something and the bezel would turn, which is not a good thing for a diver watch. The next category is loom. And here, both watches get a five, but both watches get a five for very different reasons. So uh, here's a video between the two watches in the dark. As you can see, it appears that L'Oreal has a bit of a better loom. However, that's a bit deceiving because the hands are not very well loomed. So uh, even though indices have stronger loom than Invicta because they are bigger indices, in the long run, the loom on the hands will fade quicker and you can't tell the time anyways. Uh, the Invicta, just has very little of loom applied and it doesn't last very long. It lasts about the same time as L'Oreal. To be fair, it does have more loom on the hands, but the overall loom and the longevity of loom is not great. So that's why both watches only get a five. The next category is movement. And here Invicta gets a 10 and L'Oreal gets a six. So why does L'Oreal get a six? Well, this watch here has a Seagull SD16 movement, an automatic movement, hackable, hand windable with the date complication. So all of that does sound good, but why I give it a lower mark, a much lower mark than the Invicta Pro Diver. Invicta Pro Diver here has the Seiko NH35 movement. Uh, why I give it lower mark is because in my opinion, it's a inferior movement to Invicta's Seiko NH35. Also, it's a bit more difficult to service. And also, it's much more unpredictable. Judging from your comments and your personal messages, people that bought L'Oreal watches 
have very different results in terms of accuracy with their watches. Mine here is running plus 35 seconds per day, very fast, so that's not supposed to be happening. And uh, some people mentioned that their watches are running plus five minutes per day. Uh, some people said it's super accurate, like within zero seconds per day. So it's all over the place, kind of an unpredictable movement and also a movement that's more difficult to service, more difficult to uh, get the parts for, at least in North America, than uh, this movement here, the Seiko NH35, and why uh, Invicta got a 10, because in my opinion, in this price category, it's pretty much impossible to get a better movement than the Seiko NH35. Let me rephrase that. It's pretty much impossible to get a better automatic movement than the Seiko NH35. The next category, bracelet. So here, Invicta gets a seven and L'Oreal gets an eight. So uh, why does Invicta get a seven? Well, it just has a pressed metal clasp and the clasp is held in place with uh, resistance or with uh, tension. It doesn't have any pushers or anything like that. In my opinion, that's not as reliable as a pusher based mechanism like L'Oreal watches has. It also only has hollow end links and just simple push style pins it does have some pretty good micro adjustments but the overall bracelet quality bracelet finish even here it looks like the bracelet doesn't match the case in terms of the finish so I gave it a seven I think it's a fair mark for this type of a bracelet versus L'Oreal here the only reason why it gets a higher mark because it has pretty much all the same problems as the Invicta bracelet still has the pressed metal clasp but here it has a double deployment pushers for, for the clasp, so that's good. It also has solid end links versus hollow end links on the Invicta. So those solid end links, I think, are worth a point. Everything else, all the other criticisms about the Invicta bracelet can be applied to L'Oreal bracelet as well. We see that even here, the bracelet doesn't look like it matches the case. Uh, so yeah, it's not a fantastic bracelet, but in my opinion, it is slightly better than Invictus bracelet. Next category, purpose. For which purpose this watch was built? And of course, both watches are diver watches. So here, Invicta gets a seven and L'Oreal gets an eight. So why does Invicta get a seven versus L'Oreal's eight? Well, uh, the big difference is that Sapphire Crystal. Both of these watches are designed to be kind of beater watches. Uh, you go to the beach with them, you take them on vacation, take them to swimming pool. In fact, I did take my L'Oreal watch to the swimming pool to test out the water resistance. I was diving in the swimming pool, I was swimming, the watch performed well, it didn't let any water in. So it does have some water resistance, I'm not sure if it has the full 200 meters that it claims, but it's uh, pretty good for most activities. And so does Invicta, it also has good water resistance, it's kind of a tough all around watch, and for $60 both are great for that purpose. However, L'Oreal has sapphire crystal, and yes, I did test, it does have a sapphire crystal. So that's why it gets one extra point, because it's just slightly tougher. Uh, so you won't scratch the crystal as easily, and that's why it comes ahead in this category. The next category is packaging. And here, Invicta gets an eight, and L'Oreal gets a nine. So first, Invicta. Invicta comes in this yellow box, we kind of seen this box all over the place because pretty much uh, I think 80% of Invicta watches come in box like this or some variation of this box. It has all the tags and it has this kind of cushion. 460 bucks, not bad, not fantastic, but not bad. And the box appears to be kind of a plastic, so it appears to be a combination between a cardboard and plastic with this nice material on the outside. L'Oreal here, uh, I was surprised to find, comes also in a box. You open a box like this, also has a pillow here. You can see my spare links in there. Some styrofoam, Let me take that out. So it has the warranty card, it has all the tags, the same thing as Invicta, but it also has this tool here, which is used to adjust the size of a bracelet. So this is a pin removal tool. I was very surprised to find this tool because I've never seen a watch come with this tool. I mean, I've seen some that come with a small pen removal tool, but not, but nothing like this. Sometimes they come with like a, a screwdriver or something, never with this big plastic tool. So that's why it gets one extra point for the creativity. 
However, I should note that I think I got lucky with this L'Oreal watch because I did get a box. A lot of people in the comment section below did mention that their L'Oreal watches did not come with the box. They just came in an envelope wrapped in some plastic. So I will leave a link to the uh, seller that I purchased this watch from on AliExpress. And hopefully when you uh, buy this watch or if you choose to buy this watch, it will also come in a box like mine did. The next category is resale value. And here, oh, let me move this up, there we go. So here, Invicta pulls ahead, it gets 10 points versus L'Oreal, seven points. The good thing about buying Invicta watches is that they hold their value pretty well, especially if you buy them for the uh, online prices. If you buy this watch for 60 bucks or 70 bucks on uh, Amazon or something like that, and I'll leave a link in the description below where I bought this watch. Uh, they hold their value pretty well. In fact, sometimes you can sell them for a little bit more than what you paid because Invicta has this kind of a shady strategy of hype, hyping up or hiking up their retail prices. So in a retail environment, this watch here would be like 150 bucks, 160 bucks. Sometimes I've seen them for 200 bucks. So when you're selling yours on a used market uh, on a classified or something like that for 60 bucks for 70 bucks, you can pretty much guarantee that somebody's going to buy it and you will get your money back. Versus L'Oreal here, it's an unknown brand. And in fact, there are quite a few different Chinese brands that are very similar, just have a different logo, but the specs and the look of the watch is about the same. So it's very difficult to sell this watch, especially to sell this watch for the same price as you bought it for or uh, to uh, recoup some of the losses. So I think this watch L'Oreal will lose more value in the long run versus the Invicta. And the last category, coolness factor with the cool guy emoji. And here Invicta once again pulls ahead with eight points versus L'Oreal's seven points. So why does Invicta get more points? I think it's about the brand awareness and brand recognizability. Invicta is just a much more well-known brand and it comes back to the resale value and how good you will feel about wearing this watch. A lot of people will know that it's an Invicta uh, some people will love it, some people will hate it, but nevertheless, if you bought an Invicta, clearly you like the watch, so it gives you uh, some coolness factor. Versus L'Oreal here, it's a pretty cool watch to wear because you had to clearly do some research. You didn't buy this watch at the store, so you know a thing or two about watches, but because this is such a copy of Rolex Mariner, it's an homage, but it is kind of a copy. You, I think you will lose some coolness factor with that. I mean, you will lose coolness factor with both of these watches for that because they are both Rolex and Mariner homages. But I think with Invicta, just more people know about Invicta. So that's why it gets one extra coolness point versus L'Oreal. And the overall winner, once we add up all the scores, is Invicta with 79 points versus uh, L'Oreal with 73 points. I think these watches come very close to each other. I think the big uh, difference, the big advantage of this L'Oreal watch is the fact that it has that sapphire crystal and it has uh, solid end links versus Invicta here. It has that Seiko NH35 movement and it has Invicta branding. So each watch has some advantages, has some disadvantages. All right, guys. So that was the comparison between L'Oreal and Invicta Pro Diver. I think both watches offer great value for money and whichever one you choose, I don't think you'll go wrong or will be disappointed for the price. I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know which one of the two watches do you prefer? Which one out of the two watches do you have in your collection or are thinking of adding to your collection? Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel, that always helps. By the way, today I'm a wrist, I'm wearing a Rolex Explorer. I did a, a video of how I came about buying this watch and my experience of buying this watch at the authorized dealer. That video can be found on the channel. I will also link it in the description below. Also in the description below, there's a secret link. Have a look if you're curious. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. There's no... <laughs> it was to eat it. Do you like it?